a point we are at right now. Brother Jim asked me to speak on this Sunday before revival. And we talked about this several months ago, several weeks ago, about six weeks. And the Lord had already laid this on my heart. And I said, I already know what I'm going to speak. And I filed this away. And then we hit this song this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, and I will try to go through as quickly as the Lord will allow me to this morning. But Isaiah chapter 6, verse 13. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten, as the teal tree and as the oak tree. In other words, there's a period of winter that comes. And when winter comes, the trees drop the fruit. They drop the leaves. But it doesn't mean that they die. It just means they're in a period of dormant state. And he said, whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Spurgeon says, and I I love Spurgeon, he said, trials teach us what we are. They dig up the soil. They let us see what we are made of. They just turn some of the ill weeds onto the surface. Some of the weeds that we have in our lives are just on the surface of our hearts. But it's the substance that makes us. Let's put our Bibles down and lift our hand to him this morning. Mighty God, we love you today. Lord, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Lord, let your spirit begin to move. Hallelujah. Touch today. Let your words be my words. Let your thoughts be my thoughts this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Colossians 2, 17 says, what, Which are the shadows of things to come? But it's the substance is Christ. When he began through, Paul was speaking. He said, don't let anybody judge you, Brother Hank, about the things that you eat. Don't worry about the holidays that somebody observes. Don't worry about those things. Those things were just a shadow of the things to come. But it's the substance that which is Christ. It's the Holy Ghost that's your substance. It's what we're made of. Luke 13, chapter, or chapter 13, verse 6 through 9. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in a vineyard. And he came and he sought fruit thereon, and he found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit from this fig tree and found none. Why? Cumbereth it to the ground. I looked up that word, brother Jim. That word cumbereth means to render useless, mm. to make vain. In other words, why is the ground being used for nothing? Mm. And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year that I dig about it and dung it. Let me expose the roots a little bit. Let me put a little fertilizer with it. Let me go ahead and treat it just a little bit more. And if it bear fruit, well, 
If not, then after that, you shall cut it down. With us getting ready to enter into a time of revival, we need to have the roots exposed a little bit. We need to have a little bit of the fertilizer of the Holy Ghost begin to search us out. We need to get rid of some of the weeds that have come within our lives. We have been in a dormant season. Our lives have been in a dormant season. Our spiritual lives have been in a, in a dormant season. But it's those periods of time that we find out what we're made of, Brother Charlie. It's that period of time where I reach down and check the substance that's within me. Hallelujah. That word substance, I love this. Is a particle kind, a particular kind of matter with uniform properties. It means the same spirit, coach, that's in you is the same spirit that's within me. Why, when you begin to feel somebody that's got the Holy Ghost, we said there's a kindred spirit between us. When you step into somebody that doesn't have the Holy Ghost and there's some other kind of spirit, your spirit is checked because you can feel what's going on. It's substance, the real physical matter of which a person or a thing consists and which has tangible, Brother Tim, you talked about this Wednesday night, tangible properties. I have the Holy Ghost within me. I know I have the Holy Ghost within me because it's tangible for me and I feel it. There comes points in our walk with the Lord that we have a season of barrenness. We have a cold season. We can even come in the midst of church and stand without any fruit at all. We just come to church. There's periods in my life that I knew that I just needed to get to church. Faith was about that long, that, that deep, Sister Heather. And I just couldn't have enough faith. But I knew if I could get to church and let the worship happen, let me begin to raise hands, it would be a short season. I would begin to bring forth fruit in the Holy Ghost. Sister Rose, you had a, a small season of torment within your life, but you've got fruit that's beginning to be produced right now because it's a time for bearing fruit. We enter into this time. We look at that word revival. We look at that word revival kind of in, in a negative fashion. Well, I'm not dead. I don't need to be revived. But I looked it up. And it says revival is, yes, the act of instant of reviving. But it says also a renewed attention. I want it to revive my attention. I want it to revive something within me. But the other says it's a restoration of force. Mm. A restoration of validity. A restoration of effect. Do you feel like your life for the last year has had no effect? Have you felt that the roots of, the, of your soul has been exposed and there's nothing ready? But with the revival that's beginning to happen within here, it's about to change the force that was within you, brother. Mm. You want a little bit more force within you? You step in this revival this week. You want a little bit more effect in your walk with God? You step into this revival this week. You want a little bit more power in your prayer? Woo! You might as well go ahead and step into revival. It's going to go ahead and start me back up. Luke 8, 9 through 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? They said, Lord, you're always speaking in parables. He said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others the parables, that seeing they may not see, hearing they may not understand. We have just come through a period that we really didn't understand. Mm. 
Some say it was this. Some say it was that. But we really didn't understand why we come through this period. It's not always the vine. It's, it's not the vine in which we become a part of. But it's the substance of the vine that we draw from and produce fruit. If you are just a part of the vine, you don't even pull enough substance to prefer the fuel for the fire. You're just dried up. Come on. It's not just enough to go to church. Just showing up on a Sunday morning and worshiping, going, oh, I've got it done. It's not enough for that. You've got to have, Brother Aaron, you've got to have the substance within you and say, this is what I am. <laughs> Whoo. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what do we do? Where do we go from here, Brother Tim? Leviticus chapter 25, verse 8 through 18. And you shall count seven Sabbaths of year for yourself. Seven times 70. And the time of the season, uh, the seven Sabbaths of the year shall be 49 years. Then... Then, in other words, you're going to have a period of coldness. You're going to have a period that you're going to have to go through some things. But in the 50th year, there's going to be a a trumpet called Jubilee. And then you shall cease the trumpet of Jubilee. And the sound of the on the 10th day and the 7th month, on the day of atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your lands. This trumpet, Brother Tim, had stepped all over it Wednesday night. This trumpet was not the same sound that they did for the battle. This trumpet wasn't the same sound they did when they called for prayer. This was another trumpet. It had a peculiar sound to it. It was something that when they heard it, they understood. They were coming out of a time of atonement. They were coming out of a time of humbling before God. They were coming out of a time that they were facing their sins. We have come out of a time that we have been humbled as a church. Mm. He said the blowing of the trumpet was to express joy. Not sadness. Not discomfort. Not depression, but it was to have an expression of joy. And not only joy, but gladness. He said, I was glad when they said, let me go into the house of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalms 51 eight said, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice I may be broken before the world I may be broken before God but I said Lord let me make me be joyful before you it doesn't matter what you see standing here it matters what's the substance that's within me says I'm going to give him joy it's a jubilee 10th verse of that 25th chapter of Leviticus says, And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the lands to its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possessions. If you had sold anything, if you used it to borrow against anything, at the end of that jubilee, you got to go back. If you were a slave, you had the opportunity to go back for freedom. How many feel that they've been a slave for the last year? It's time to proclaim a jubilee this year. It's time to proclaim liberty today. It's time to step back into the family of God. That 50th year shall be jubilee to you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your unattended vine. The owner of the land was not to go back and plant anything. He was, allowed, he was supposed to allow it to come back up on itself. Any farmer will tell you that if you want to grow new stuff, you're going to have to plow it back up and replant it. What God was going to do is say, let me show you how I plant things. Let me show you how I bring forth fruit to you. In fact, when it would grow up during its accord in the Sabbath year, the undressed vine was called Nazar. 
It's the same word that they use for Nazarite. Because it was uncut. Mm. Instead of the crops being reaped for the owner, it was provided for the rich and the poor and everybody. We are entering into a time of jubilee. Let me hear. You are entering into a time of jubilee. In fact, it, it even goes back in. It says that when they made peace with God, then liberty was given. You can't get liberty until you make peace with God. You can try to have joy, but until you make your peace with God, until you have a clear conscience before God, you can't have true liberty. It's time to put off what we used to have. It's time to put on what God has given us and claim victory within the church. Hallelujah. Knowing the time that now is a high time to awake out of sleep. For now there is our salvation nearer when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Brother Tim, I know you, you, you and Sister Trish has got this harmony thing going on. And if you've got kids and you want to go on Wednesday night, go. Because if you don't, I'm going. They've got helmets. They've got, they got the camouflage. But Paul didn't say camouflage us. He didn't say put on that, that, that camouflage and hide amongst everybody else. I'm tired of being an undercover agent. I'm tired of being a, 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 a Christian that wants to hide back there. If I'm going to put on the armor of light, everybody's going to know who I am. If I'm going to put on an armor of light, I've got to have a little joy within me. Because it said I'm putting off the darkness of depression. I'm putting off the darkness of despair. I'm putting off off the, the darkness of addiction. I'm putting on the light of the Holy Ghost and stepping into a dark world and let them see what revival and jubilee is all about. Whoo! It's a time of rest during Jubilee. You didn't have to go ahead and do anything. You didn't have to uh, plant. You didn't have to reap. It's a time of rest. Just as the loss... Just as the loss of the voice of mirth and marriage marked the destruction of the city of Jerusalem during Jeremiah's time, so the return of those voices marked the restoration of the people of God. Most important, there would be a return to worship. Jeremiah thirty-three eleven, and the voice of joy. And the voice of gladness. And the voice of bridegroom. And the voice of the pride. And the voice of those who will say, Praise ye the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good. For his mercy endureth forever. And those who will bring the sacrifice of praise in the house of the Lord. For I will cause the captives of the land to return as first saith the Lord. You want you believe? He's giving you the land back. You want your family back? He's opening the door today. It's time to stand in this time. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4, 9 and 10. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. We have worked hard to get where we are right now. Whoo. We've taken chairs out. We've added chairs back in. We've marked chairs off. we figured this out. I think it was a Sunday before Easter, Sister Crystal, was the first time we went outside. We moved sound systems out, sound systems back in. It's a good thing we don't, we're not scared of heights because we've been all up all over the, the uh, platforms and the scaffolding to preach from. But he said there's a rest for he that entereth into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. We've worked hard. Now's the time to enter into the rest of the Holy Ghost and let God give the increase this year. 
We've got plans that are getting ready to happen. But it's not going to be what we do. It's what's going to do what he's going to do. Jubilee is a period of 50. In 50 days, the disciples were on a roller coaster of emotions. When Jesus cru- was crucified on Calvary, three days ra- later, he arose. For 40 days after he arose, he taught them, and then he was taken up out of their sight. We lost him, we gained him. We gained him back, we lost him again. What were they about to do? Acts 2, 1 and 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. What does Pentecost have to do with Jubilee? It was the same day as what Jubilee was all about. He said, I'm going to give you rest. Enter into my rest through the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Pentecost is the Greek name for the festival's weeks, a prominent feast of the Jewish calendar, a celebration of when God gave them the Ten Commandments. When he went to the cross, the law was fulfilled. Fifty days after, they got joy. When they left Egypt, their joy, when they left, there was a blood sacrifice they had to put over the doorstep. Fifty days ever after, they got joy and release. That is jubilation. Isaiah 6, 3 says, but yet, and I'm about to close, yet in it shall be a tenth. And it shall return. Mm. And it shall be eaten. You see, we have faced the winds of discouragement. We have faced the floods of loss within this last year. We have faced the weeds of discord throughout all this. But he said, there's a jubilee that's getting ready to happen. You stand with me this morning. Romans 14, 17, 18, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. In the Holy Ghost. Mm. As we're getting ready for revival. I'm going to ask. That. We start to make our hearts right. Don't wait till Friday night. To have something happen. Don't wait till the last night. Or even wait till Sunday morning. To have the evangelist go ahead and prick your heart. And say oh now I want to go ahead and repent. You might as well go ahead and step up. And repent today. If you haven't been baptized in Jesus name. We've got water in the baptism right now. I turned the heater on this morning. What doth hindereth you? Find a place and repent. If you haven't repent, repent right where you're at. Step out this morning with joy. Fast between now and Wednesday night. For now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Believing that ye may abound in hope. If this is a time of jubilee. I'm going to step out. Don't come in Wednesday night trying to make things right. Don't bring your depression Wednesday night. Leave it here this morning. Don't drag the the suitcases full of all the stuff that we have. Leave it here this morning. Step in expecting joy. Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Come back Sunday for joy because I'm proclaiming liberty within this church right now. I'm proclaiming a year of jubilee right now. It's time to step into the rest of the Holy Ghost. He said through the power of the Holy Ghost. So what's your tent made of? 
What's the substance of your soul made of? Are you saying I need him more than I need anything else? Then your substance is right with God. Mm. Oh, come on. Let's just lift a hand to him this morning. first part of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6 he said Isaiah said I was in the day of the Lord and I, in the day that in the year that Uzziah died he loved Uzziah he was his king he sought after his king and when he died he was in prayer before him but that's not the rest of the story right brother Hank because the last couple of years of Uzziah, he did wonders. He brought the kingdom back to where it was supposed to be. He did a wonderful thing. I mean, the things were just named after him. But what he did is he stepped in between the priest and the altar of incense. And he thought the priest it couldn't do it well enough so I'm going to go ahead and step in there and as he was having the censor before God the priest came in and said hey Uzziah you can't do that and he began to argue with the priest and the Bible said at his forehead there was leprosy began and they had to throw him out now is not the time to step out of what brother Jim says out of your lane now is the time to enter in to what God has for you whether you're a minister whether you're a worship leader whether you're a saint of God it's time to enter into Jubilee quit trying to do it yourself quit trying to work it through yourself let the Holy Ghost begin Because if you try to do it yourself, there's a consequence. I think we make this way too hard. I want this for my life. And the Lord's saying, but I want to give you that. But because we're so tied up in what I want, I miss that. Isaiah said, Let's go ahead and begin to sing. Let's enter into a time of jubilee. Let's enter into a time of joy. If you said, I need to repent, repent right now. If you need to be baptized, re-baptize right now. It's time to enter into his rest.
He died. He bled and he died on an old rugged cross so that you could your your debts would all be paid. My debts were paid at an altar of repentance. My debts were paid in a baptistry full of his blood. If you have a debt that you would like to have washed away, please fill these altars. If, if it doesn't matter, like I said, if you've been here all your life or if this is your Mountain first day, if you have something that you need to put under the blood to prepare you for revival, I would ask you to come today. I'm going to I'm gonna go to the altar and I'm going to search my heart today. I want to make sure that there be no wicked way in me so that God can move in my life like he's never moved in my life before. I would ask that you find a place to pray, that you would find a personal altar so that everything can be removed between you and God. I know that I know that if you're like me every now and then something creeps in between me and God. If there's anything in between you and your jubilee, anything in between you and your grace and the mercy of God, let's get that out of the way right now. He wants to wash it away right now. He wants to fill you with His Spirit. He wants to wash you in His blood all over again right now today. Hallelujah. If anyone needs to be baptized, I would love to baptize you today. Just repent of your sins. Tell God I am forsaking my sins. I'm leaving them at the altar. I want them no more. Hallelujah. Let's sing.
Isaiah said, and I seen the Lord high and lifted up, and the glory filled the house. What you're feeling right now is the glory of God. What you feel right now is the mercy and grace of a loving God. There's such a sweet, humbling spirit right now. Why? Because His glory is filling the temple. He said his, his train went on and on and on. You are His glory. Thank you. 
as they continue to sing and as we continue to pray around the altars, there are battles going on around this altar for young people's souls. I would ask right now as they sing, if you're, if you're here today, I'd ask that you extend a hand toward them and that you pray that God would work a miracle in hearts today. That folks would walk away from this altar different than when they came in. Listen, as they sing that again, continue. And let's pray with them. Let's extend a hand toward each and every one of them. And just pray that God would walk with them, that he would fill them up with his spirit. Hallelujah. as you're dismissed today. Hallelujah. How many of you feel the spirit of jubilee? How many of you feel like God is about to deliver back to you everything that the enemy has stolen from you? Amen. Everything that the enemy has taken from you, God is able to give you back. Hallelujah. Go and spend today with your family. You won't get another opportunity to spend today with you this afternoon with your family. Amen.